and welcome back to my channel. So again, I am Shami and I'm usually doing travel vlogs but since there is a pandemic and I cannot really go out, I'm just creating content at my home. So I've thought about making 25 to 28 facts about myself since I've been vlogging in this channel for about two years now and I haven't really shared a lot about myself because I didn't want to share personal information but I think I am now ready so if you are interested to see or to, to know more about me just keep on watching okay let's go Okay, so before we start, just an update about my hair. I dyed my hair two weeks ago, and it's supposed to be blue, but now it's faded into like a blue-green color, and that's because I've been washing my hair every day with shampoo. I cannot skip shampoo. Okay, anyway, let's start. So, fact number one, my name is actually Shalom. Shalom. So it is from the Bible. I think it's a Hebrew word, and it means peace. All right, so number two, my nickname is not as peaceful as my name means. So my nickname is Shami, so from the root word Sham, if you're gonna search what that means, it's actually a bad word, it's a negative word. So my mom has been telling me to tell my friends stop calling me Shami, but it's already been my nickname for years, so I cannot just tell people to stop calling me Shami. Number three, I was born in Saudi Arabia. Number four, my parents were actually missionaries in Saudi Arabia before. Christianity wasn't really welcome in Saudi Arabia at that time, so they were serving in a church underground and then number five i've undergone undergone or underwent just but i think it's underwent anyway i've underwent i've undergone a major operation um, surgery that's why my family had to go back here in the philippines because uh, that time the doctors in Saudi Arabia were not of good quality and it's the first case my my case was the first one in Saudi Arabia I'm not sure if it's the first case in the Philippines too and it's like they're gonna treat it as an experiment or a study so my parents decided to bring me home I think I was three years old that time I had cholecystectomy um, I'm gonna spell the word here. Cholecystectomy. They remove the bladder, my gallbladder. So um, I have a lot of restrictions. That's my next fact. Number six, I have a lot of restrictions. I cannot, I should not eat fatty food, salty food, but I'm eating all of those. Like the fat of the pork, I, I should not eat that. I grew up not eating that because my parents didn't allow me, but now I eat them. Okay. So, aside from the food that I should not eat, I should not be tired, I should not lift um, heavy weights because of my operation. Um, according to my parents, am I going to count this as another fact? But anyway, um, according to my parents or my mom, my mom said that the doctors told them that um, after the operation, the doctor said that I can only live until around 13 years old because I was like a baby when I had that operation, but I'm still here, so thank God. Okay, next, um, fact number seven, I used to be very, very shy. All throughout elementary school, I always cover my mouth with handkerchief and I cannot actually smile in front of the camera so when there's a camera and it's picture taking I always do this like this and my dad had to teach me and my sister how to smile um, he always uh, we had this um, specific time where he will tell us to go in front of the mirror and practice smiling but I didn't really learn how to smile in that way. Okay. Anyway, 
um yeah i used to be very very shy and fact number eight i joined the ministry and served as a volunteer in zambales camp so if you've you've been to zambales for a youth camp with thousands of people i used to be a production director um the one controlling the stage and i did i joined lots of ministry in there and i was a full-time church member as well i led lots of groups and i became extrovert because i i i had to talk to a lot of people i had to lead people even older than me so yeah that honed my skill as a people person all right and number nine i've always been a part of the honor roll so i went to bible baptist um bible baptist school if you know school of tomorrow is famous for being for homeschooling but we did paces um things like that and i have lots of awards from that school and then i think because of financial problems we stopped going to that private school and we transferred to a public school i had culture shock where everyone's cursing words i've never heard before shouting parts of bodies so um during that time i had a difficult um i had a difficult time adjusting to the world and my grades got affected but when i went to high school i think third fourth year high school until college i've retained the good scores the honor roll but fact number 10 i wanted to act cool more than to look smart so i think this started in fourth year high school or third year high school like i was the cool student carrying guitar and i chose to be late so people will be looking at me while i'm walking on the school ground and until i went to college i didn't want to show people that i'm that smart i don't want to be number one i'm good with being number two three four five just enough to show people that i have brains but i don't want to be this smart one because people don't usually like that and then i'll be sitting at the back of the classroom even if i cannot see clearly or even if i cannot hear the teacher because students at the back were the cool ones but don't do that okay number 11 i always i always sing a thousand miles and torete in the in video ke or norebang for koreans um those two are my favorite songs i even sang it in korea um and then there's a backstory with a thousand miles so my college friends in sdi always tease me with a thousand miles because we had this subject i studied hrm um we had the wine tasting as our first subject and then the next subject is english so um i got drunk trying all the wines and liqueurs it's a requirement and our professor will punish us if we if we do not drink enough so i got drunk and then it's our english class time our professor came in and i kept on singing a thousand miles and my professor was so disappointed at me because I, i'm one of the top students that she walked out and my friends brought me to the toilet and i kept on crying like i'm not drunk i'm not drunk i i know what i'm saying i just want to sing so yeah oh my gosh it's so embarrassing that i can still remember okay next number 12 i was a part of a dance troupe in sdi but that's short-lived i think just two semesters in 13 again i studied hrm or hotel and restaurant management but i stopped due to financial problems because aside from the tuition fee my mom's a single mom and the tuition fees really expensive also the ingredients we had to buy for our cooking class is so expensive 
like we don't cook Filipino food like adobo, pritong, isda, things like that. Um, we cook Japanese food or Chinese food and the ingredients are so expensive. I couldn't continue studying. So, number 14, I shifted to financial management and it costed less. It cost less because I didn't have to buy ingredients on top of my tuition fee. I only had to study and yeah. Number 15, I worked at SM Cinema. I worked at SM Marikina. I I was not the ticket girl. I was and we we are called usher porter. We are um, the ones collecting your ticket in front of the cinema door, checking your bags. So um, I became addicted to movies because I could watch all the movies showing that time and we can go around the cinema pretending to be checking the people but we're actually just watching the movie next mm, 16 how i became an esl teacher my mom was working at one san miguel and she told me why don't you try applying there esl office on another floor of their building and then i tried and i got hired but the pay was so bad. I think we're getting 3,000 pesos a month. That was just a part-time um, position, but that's that pay is still bad. Okay, next is number 17. My first solo travel was in Cebu. That time, um, Malapascua was... No, was it Malapascua? Kalangaman in Leyte was... So famous because of Kapusumo Jessica Saw. It's a TV show featuring travel destinations. So that was so famous, and I wanted to go there. I asked my couple of friends to go with me, and then they said, "Okay, let's go, let's go." Until I booked my ticket, and I ended up going alone. I was so nervous. I didn't want to go, but I said, "Whatever." I already booked the ticket, I already filed my leaves, I already um, booked my hotel, so whatever, I'll just go. And that's my first solo travel, that's so life-changing, I don't regret doing it. Okay, number 18, my first out-of-the-town trip was in Vietnam. And 19, I've been to South Korea twice. And 20, I can read, write, and speak Korean. So, um, I started by just watching Korean dramas and then when you're watching Korean dramas, I know most of people know this, um, you can pick up a word or two like Jinja or Annyeonghaseyo, Genchanayo, things like that. So, I wasn't really um, interested about their language even if I've been teaching Koreans for years that time, but I had a dream. I think this will be um, fact 21. I had a dream of becoming a linguist, like someone who can speak multiple languages. So I said, I'll start with Korean. So I enrolled in a Korean language course, which was just a basic one. It lasted for three to four months. And I had a certificate. I received a certificate that I learned um, basic Korean skills. So after that, um, I just, I think my skills were my Korean skills were honed more because I am working with Koreans like I teach Koreans and then I just pick up vocabularies from them and I kind of understand but I can't really speak in sentences but when it comes to food I'm the best I'm really good at my Korean skills when it comes to ordering food 22 I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> okay I think I shouldn't be sharing that but yeah I'm lactose intolerant I cannot drink milk comfortably if I drink milk bad things will happen fact 23 I love both movies and books um, other people think that if you're into movies you're not really into books but I love both of them 24 I know how to cook Korean food and I'm actually selling Korean food now um, just when I have free time, I'm selling like tteokbokki, gerenmari, 
Um, what else? Tonkatsu. Basic Korean dishes that I can prepare quickly. Though I can cook more complicated Korean food like kimchi jjigae or well, just anything. I think you can learn how to cook anything because of YouTube. Yeah. Fact 25, I own a travel agency but it's not operating as of the moment obviously. Also because of Fact 26, I easily get tired of things I'm doing even if I'm passionate about it. Even traveling, you can get burnt out of traveling if you do it a lot. Same with um, teaching or same with <clears throat> Um, doing the business after some time if I feel like people are expecting me to do good on something I don't want to do it anymore I don't want to do it anymore because I want to do things just for myself and because I like it fact 27 I don't like bread I just thought about that suddenly because there's a bread in front of me so it's not just I don't like bread um, I have allergy wheat allergy I get rashes when I eat too much bread and fact 28 I love coffee so much I used to be not a coffee person I think four or five years ago I was not a coffee person because I my stomach easily hurts or I am acidic but now I don't care I love coffee anyway I think that's it for my 28 facts about me I hope you learned something about me if you really wanted to know more about the person vlogging in this channel so I think that'll be all and I'll see you in my next vlog. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Also click the notification bell so you'll get updated whenever there's a new vlog up. Bye!